Hi everyone, in this video we'll be learning about the compound interest formula and we'll be learning how to use it with the example we see on the screen here. So let's go right ahead and I'll go ahead and write the formula that we're going to be using throughout this video. The formula states that the future value of our investment is equal to the present value of our investment times, in parentheses, 1 plus r over 100 times k, and I close the pair of parentheses, and that's all raised to the power of k times n. And don't worry, I'll explain what each of those letters mean. For the moment, I'll just go ahead and quickly box that formula. There we go. Now, do make a note of this formula. If you're studying compound interest, then trust me, you'll need this. Okay, now that the formula is written, let's go ahead and define each of these things. So, as I said whilst writing the formula, capital FV stands for the future value, future value. So the whole idea there, of course, is if we invest a certain amount, then the future value is how much we can expect that amount to be worth after a certain number of years. Next, the PV that we see here, well, that stands for present value. So capital V stands for present, present value. And to be perfectly honest, I kind of find the term present value a bit misleading at times. And so what I tell my students is that the present value is simply the initial amount we invest. So that's the amount we invest before we earn any interest on it. And so in fact, I'll go ahead and write that in a pair of parentheses here, and I'll go ahead and say that that's the initial, initial amount. There we go. Okay, the next thing we have here is this R that's placed on the numerator. Now the R refers to the annual interest rate. And if I'm going to be rigorous about this, I'll go ahead and write that R is the nominal annual rate of interest. Nominal annual rate of interest. Put simply, it's the annual interest rate we're given for the investment. So for example, if we're told that the annual rate is 5%, then we'd say that R is equal to 5. Or if we're told that the annual rate is 7.3%, then the R we have here would be equal to 7.3. That being said, I carry on. The K that we can see here on the denominator as well as on the power or exponent we have here, well, that tells us the number of compounding periods we have in a year. And I'll just quickly write that. There we go. K is the number, and I'll just write number, of compounding periods per year. Per year. There we go. Now, if you're unsure of what this means, the number of compounding periods per year, put simply, k tells us how many times per year we earn interest on our investment. And so if we're told, for instance, that interest is compound annually, that means once a year, so k would be equal to 1, but we could also be told that interest is compounded quarterly, so k would equal to 4. And of course, as we'll be seeing in this example, we could also be told that interest is compounded monthly, and since there are 12 months in a year, k would equal to 12. And in a nutshell, that's the whole idea behind the number of compounding periods per year. Last but not least, the n that we see in this formula here, well, that refers to the number of years we invest for. So I'll just go ahead and say that n, n two dots, is the number, number of years. Okay, so this is the formula we'll be using for calculating compound interest. And we have the meaning of each of the things we see inside that formula. So let's go ahead and see how we actually use this formula with the example that we see here. We're told Kathy decides to invest 5,000 euros at 6% annual interest rate. And we're then asked how much will her investment be worth after 7 years if, first of all, interest is compounded annually, and secondly, if the interest is compounded monthly. Okay, well, as I always do, I'll start by writing S-O-L here for solution. Now, it's worth pointing out here that whether it be for question 1 or for question 2, Kathy's initial investment is the same, that's 5,000 euros, and the annual interest rate that she gets is also the same, 6%, and the number of years she invests for is also the same. Indeed, it's 7 years. In other words, using these three values that I'm boxing right now, so initial amount of 5,000 euros, annual interest rate of 6%, and number of years is 7 years, we can already make a note of the fact that for both of these questions, the present value, which remember is the initial amount, will be equal to 5,000, 
the interest rate R will be equal to 6, and the number of years N will be equal to 7. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that. That's the key bit of information that we should be taking away from the first two lines that we see here. And now we're ready to answer each of these two questions. So, for question 1, we're told that interest is compounded annually. And that bit of information is very important. Indeed, if it's compounded annually, and I'll just quickly write that, compounded annually, what that means is that we only earn interest on our investment once per year. And so in the context of our formula over here, what that tells us is the value of k, the number of compounding periods per year. Remember, the number of compounding periods per year is equal to the number of times we earn interest on our investment. So here, since it's compounded annually, we can go ahead and state that k must be equal to 1. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that. That's very important. There we go. Okay, so now we have the present value, the interest rate, the number of years, and the number of compounding periods. And consequently, we're ready to calculate the future value of Kathy's investment. And what I would suggest you do in an exam is always make a copy of the formula that you're using. And once that's done, then you replace all of the values that you have. So let's see, quickly copying the formula, we know that capital FV, the future value, is equal to PV times, in parentheses, 1 plus R over 100 times K, and all that's raised to the power of K times N, or simply KN. Now replacing PV by 5,000, R by 6, the Ks we have here by 1, and the N we have here by 7, this becomes 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1 plus 6 over 100 times 1. I close the parentheses and I raise them to the power of 1 times 7. Now, of course, 100 times 1 is just 100, so this fraction here is 6 over 100, which is 0 0.06. So this quickly becomes 5,000, 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.06, and that's raised to the power of 1 times 7, which is just 7. Finally, adding this 1 to the 0 0.06, this is equal to 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1.06 raised to the power of 7. And I should say, although we could have just typed all of this line here into our calculator to get the final answer directly, I deliberately did a bit more working here to reach this line. And the reason for that is because this last line here showcases exactly what's going on if the interest is compounded annually for seven years. Here's the whole idea. If we multiply any number by 1.06, then we're increasing that number by 6%. Furthermore, since this 1.06 is written to the power of 7, well, technically, this term here could be thought of as 7 successive 1.06s in a long product. In other words, what we're seeing here is, in fact, 5,000 times 7 successive 6% increases. And that makes sense. Remember, if interest is compounded annually, then we earn interest on our investment once a year. And so in the case of a 6% annual rate, our investment is increased by 6% each year. And of course, since Kathy invested for 7 years, we'll be faced with 7 consecutive 6% increases. And that's what this is showing us right here. That being said though, let's move over to my calculator, which you can see on the screen right here, and let's go ahead and calculate 5,000 times 1.06 raised to the power of 7. And so if I quickly type that, that's 5,000 times, in parentheses, 1.06, exit those parentheses, and raise all of that to the power of 7. I'm now happy with everything I typed, so I click on Enter. And we're done. If interest is compounded annually, then after 7 years, Kathy's investment will be equal to 7,518 euros and 15 cents. And that's the answer. Okay, now let's see how this result compares to when interest is compounded monthly. And so that would be question two, which I'll do right here. And I'll draw a little line to separate the working, like so. Okay, now as I just said, in question two, interest is compounded monthly. And in fact, I'll quickly write that. It's compounded, compounded, 
monthly. And what that tells us is that the number of compounding periods per year will be 12, since there are 12 months in a year. In other words, we'll be earning some interest on our investment every single month. And so in the case where interest is compounded monthly, the k we have in our formula, well, it will simply equal to 12. So I'll write that k will be equal to 12. And again, I'll go ahead and box that value. There we go. Okay, now again, copying the formula we have here for the future value, we have capital F V equals to P V times in parentheses one plus R over 100 times K and all that's raised to the power of K times N, so K N. Now replacing P V by the 5,000 we had, the R by six, the K's we have on this denominator and this power here by 12, and of course the number of years N by seven, this becomes 5,000, 5,000 times in parentheses, one plus six over 100 times 12. I close the parentheses and all of that's raised to the power of 12 times seven. Okay, now at this stage, it's worth taking a pause for a second to make sure we really understand how this whole thing is working. As I said a minute or two ago, when interest is compounded monthly, it means that we're earning interest every single month. But careful, the amount of interest we'll earn each month will no longer be 6%. Remember that 6% is our annual rate. Instead, the amount of interest we'll be earning every single month will be equal to 6% divided by 12, the number of compounding periods. And you can go ahead and check, but 6% divided by 12, well, that's 0.5%. And so the whole idea when interest is compounded monthly is that we'll be earning 0.5% interest every single month of the year instead of just 6% once per year. And to showcase that further, let me actually show you what all of this inside this pair of parentheses would actually equal to. So let's see, this will equal to 5,000, 5,000 times in parentheses, one plus six over 100 times 12. And by all means check if needs be, but six divided by 100 times 12, well, that's gonna be equal to 0 0.005. And I close that pair of parentheses and I raise that to the power of 12 times seven, which again, you can check is equal to 84. Now adding this one to the 0 0.005, we can see that this is equal to 5,000 times in parentheses 1.005 and all that's raised to the power of 84. Now, if all these calculations and numbers are worrying you a little bit, let me reassure you. In an exam, you would type everything you see on this line of working into your calculator and get the answer directly. But for the sake of this video, I felt it was important to reach this line to show you exactly what's going on here. If we multiply any number by 1.005, then we'll be increasing it by 0.5%. And so this 1.005 raised to the power of 84 corresponds to 84 successive 0.5% increases. And that should make sense because in seven years, there are seven times 12, which is 84 months. And since interest is compounded monthly here, we'll be earning that 0.5% interest 84 successive times. That being said, let me move back to my calculator, which you can see on the screen now, and I'll go ahead and calculate what this is equal to. So let's see, that's 5,000, 5,000 times in parentheses 1.005, and all of that's being raised to the power of 84, since there are 84 months in a seven year period. I double check, I'm happy with everything I typed, and I click on enter, and we're done. If interest is compounded monthly, then the future value, capital FV of Kathy's investment, will be 7,601 euros and 85 cents. And that's the answer. Notice that Kathy earns more if interest is compounded monthly. Indeed, we can clearly see that 7,601.85 is greater than 7,518.15. And perhaps you may be thinking that that 83 euro difference isn't that big a deal. But if we were dealing with millions or even billions of euros, 
then that 83 difference would correspond to a significant amount of money. Either way, it's important to keep in mind that for a given interest rate, so in this case 6%, we'll earn more interest as the number of compounding periods increases. So the greater the value of k, the more interest we'll be earning. And there we have it, we've now seen the formula for compound interest, we've explained what everything inside it means, and we've seen how we can use it by working through this example. And so hopefully you now have a decent understanding of how to calculate compound interest. There we go everyone, I really hope that helped, and if it did please hit like on this video, drop a comment down below, and even subscribe to this channel to help get this video to as many students as possible. All that being said and done, that's it for this tutorial.